I'm George. This is Ryan. These are the three watches I want and the three watches you need. You can only have three watches. What would they be? Today, we're going to talk about my three watch collection. People often ask us what your favorite watch is. What's your ideal collection? Collectively, we have been in the watch industry for well over 30 years. You kind of do it into categories. Daily driver or daily diver, as yep. the case may yeah. be. Um, I, I don't, I don't want to say beater because the comments will beat me up. But, um, but yeah, your beater watch. Yeah. Um, your weekender, slight flex, car show kind of a thing. Yep. And then you need that ultimate watch. You're going out with a, a, a group of guys who are all watch guys. You know, uh, your your dinner at Ocean's Forty Four. Right. You know, something yeah. to flex on the room, kind of a thing. Yeah. Now, I am fortunate enough to already own one of my ultimate three. Yep. Um. So here we have Rolex's GMT Master Two. Yep. And I'm oddly specific in the variants. Um, this is the 50th anniversary GMT Master Two. Uh, also one of your favorite watches, but in gold. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so this one here has the green hand and a little bit of the writing on the dial is in green. Uh, it was a relatively short one. What did they do? Two years? Three years? No, they actually did it longer than that. They, it was just one of those things that was kind of just overtaken by the Pepsis sure. and yep. by the Batman later on. And now, you know, obviously the root beers and things like that. But I do like your choice on this. The reason being is that it kind of goes with the most things, yeah. right? You're not stuck to a red or a blue or, you know, whatever. The, the green's very minimal, and I feel like it's it can basically kind of adapt well with your with your outfits and things like that. So. Well, and, and things I like about it. Um, I've always kind of said the sub's like your ultimate watch, like like the watch everybody should have. So yeah. this, is, this is a sub with a complication. Yep. Um, it's a complication I use. Uh, I am fortunate enough that in my line of work, I get to travel. So uh, it, it is the ultimate travel watch. It's perfect for that. Uh, that little touch of green is really cool, and and the magic word is discontinued. <laughs> um, I, I just love that. I, I still think it's slept on. Oh, it's very slept on, and it's actually the cheapest GMT at the moment. I mean, from the modern versions, from the ceramics, yeah. honestly. Yeah, like uh, like like a huge disparity. Oh. Like, like you can pick this up like on the cheap, and and that's again like 10, 11,000. We're, we're talking about yeah. big numbers here still, but comparatively on the cheap. Compared to like you know, obviously a Pepsi going for like eighteen, or the Riddler or Sprite, as people call it, uh, going for like eighteen, nineteen thousand, which is actually I know that's that's, on, that's like, on your list. Well, that's coming for me <laughs> shortly. So it'd basically be the exact same one of this, but left-handed since I'm left-handed uh hence the watch on the right wrist but yeah so it would actually be the exact same watch as the daily beater moving on um i think one of the best watches ever made full stop uh is the audemars piguet 15300 st which you used to i did yes. um and, and and again that may be why it kind of dovetailed back to dovetails back into my yeah. story um i i owned this watch for the better part of a decade um, I got into a position where I needed to sell it. I sold it. I made money on it. Um, it, it did exactly what it needed to do exactly. in my life at the time. It's um, very liquid. But I missed it every single day. Um, it's real expensive now. It was expensive then. Now it's real expensive. Yep. But it's funny what a good and perfect watch this is. Um, I think it's the ultimate expression of Gerald Genta's original design. Okay. You're getting into uh, the debut of Audemars Piguet's in-house manufactured movement. You're adding a second hand. You're adding a screw down crown. It's just perfect. It's in the God size, 39 millimeters. Don't hate me on that because he's going to go 41 I was gonna all day. Like, I'm going to go 41. So. But it really is the ultimate watch. You can do it with t shirt and jeans. You can do it with a suit. It kind of does everything. Immensely respected amongst, amongst watch I was collectors. Say, it's a great flex watch. You know, even amongst collectors, you can walk into yep. any sort of watch event. And you're going to be the kind of the bell of the ball in there, right? And I would actually do the exact same thing, but just slightly bigger. So the 15400 400. Is, my, is my favorite. I don't really like the 15500 because of the giant void at the bottom of the dial. Yeah. The 15510 is not so bad because it kind of comes in a little bit more. Yep. But I would still, you know, if I had the money right now, I would buy the 15400. Uh, well, and, and, I and do, actually the white dial too. Yeah, so. I do. I do like the quirkiness of the 154. Yep. Um, I like the fact it's a little unloved. I like yeah, the fact yeah. It kind of like, fell it's through like the that in betweener, basically. Um, yeah. Oh, and again, and again. Discontinued. I love that. Right. And, um, and with the 15.4, yeah. So, 15.4 as well, yeah. yeah. Um, so then you have this this piece to wear when you really got to flex on guys who know what they're talking about. Yes. Um, for me, it's going to be the Maritz Grossman back page. 
Um, this is a small company. Heck, a lot of you might not have heard of, unless you're a fan of the channel because we're fans of the watch. Um, very, very small German company. Um, female uh, founded and CEO'd it's right pretty, now, which I really awesome. did. Christine Hutter, uh, one of the most important people in the watch industry, and we were really fortunate enough to have her here. And Elizabeth interviewed her, yeah. so um, keep an eye out for that. Uh, the interview's fantastic; should be hitting the channel soon. Um, these guys, I mean, they made sub three hundred watches last year. Crazy, all hand done, absolutely incredible. And this is one of those watches where you ever flip a watch over on the back. And you think, oh, that should be on the dial side. All the time. That's what they did. Yep. They literally took the movement, flipped it over. There's some armature in here so that all the functions are the same. They had to flip everything around. It's just crazy. This is a limited edition. It's number four of eight that were ever made. Come on. Oh, my God. And and like a few other brands, but I think this one might even do it a little bit better. It's one of those watches where if you are uninitiated, if you know nothing about watches, across from you go, Oh, What's that's a that? nice watch. Yeah, exactly. Yep. You're yep. like, what the heck is and, going and, on and, there? And it's not a matter of opinion. It's just empirical fact. It, it's just, yes. it, it, is, it is that good a watch. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's a company you should know about. Um, uh, you, need to, you need to explore. They remind me of a long Sooner from 20 years ago. Yes. Where they were still nimble and fun and had a sense of humor. I, I know it's hard for the Germans, but um, but but I think they're doing everything right. Um, their, their goal one day is to get to like 800 watches. So. Right. Even in a room full of watch guys, you're going to be wearing something that is orologically superior to most, and you might actually show them something they've never seen before. And ultimately, when you're when you're dealing with guys who know watches, that's something really cool. When you yes. can bring something in that obviously is high quality and something they've never seen before, that's the ultimate flex. I was going to say, yeah, I was like, that's like the perfect flex right there. Yeah, mine would be a lot more tame, and I would say, quote unquote, an affordable flex. <laughs> Uh, it would be the Vacheron 56 in yep. blue, um, ten eleven thousand dollars. Now I say that affordable. It's still expensive watch, but affordable compared to something like yep. this being thirty forty thousand uh, dollars. But I think that watch, you know, anytime you bring a Vacheron into the equation, it's it's going to be a one flex, of the big three, right? Yeah. It's one of the big three, yeah. one of the holy grails. And I think that watch, you know, speaks higher than what it actually says on paper. Well, right? it, and it is one of those fascinating things where they didn't have to do that yet they did. Right. And, and, and I still can't really put my finger on why, other, other than maybe putting it into more people's hands. Yeah. Um, uh, more people can, can aspire right. to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And most yeah. of us, I can't afford a bash right, right. Yeah. But, but you someone kind of goes, watches oh, at it, yeah. you're like, oh, you're right there. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yep. It, it puts it within reach, or at least within dreaming reach. Yes, exactly. Um, well, thank you, guys. I'm yeah. going to put my watch back on. Yeah, now. yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Mine. Right. Um, but, but thank you, guys. Uh, you know what? Comment below. Uh, yeah. Three watches, go. What are you doing?